And welcome back to my let's play of Persona 5 New Game Plus. And we are here, and what you might have noticed is that the date has changed at the top, and there's a reason for this. Um, first time I played through this section when I was recording, I made the mistake of taking one too many days um, doing other stuff other than the palace which meant that I could not unlock the temperance persona on the day that I wanted to which is the Thursday of this week and so rather than re-record the entirety of the Madarame palace and the Madarame boss battle hmm. what we're going to do is we're going to rearrange those days ever so slightly now it's slightly changed obviously because there are things that for example on this Sunday that I can't do um, if I'm doing the palace, uh, things like that, which become a bit of a, or if I'm sending the calling card, I think that's what I would be doing. So I could still go and get the, uh, get the drinks here. But the point being is that I wouldn't, I'm not going to do that on the day that I should be doing that. Um, with regards to the continuity of this series. But I figured that whilst that is a little bit annoying, it's a lot more of, um... It would be a lot more annoying for me to actually have to record another three or so hours worth of footage just, um, you know, of the same stuff that I'd, uh, you know, just completed. Indeed. So we're going to head over to uh, Madarame's palace today. Everyone's here. Now then. Let's start our strategy meeting. Very well. Let us conclude this meeting. Okay, let's go. Oh yeah. We haven't decided on the new recruit's code name yet. It has to be Kitsune. You know, with that Kitsune mask and everything. Hell yeah! That really leaves an impression. Are you talking about me? What do you want your name over here to be? I'd say Da Vinci. Nope. Well, you've got that mask like On said. And there's that weird tail. All right, you're Aburage. <laughs> Very well. He's agreed to it? It's decided then. Aburage. Nuh uh, not happening. Do you have any ideas, Joker? Oh, just keep it literal, huh? Sounds good to me. What do you think, Fox? It's acceptable. It's set then. Let's go. Listen up. Hmm? Okay, so we are here at the start of Madarame's palace once more, and again, it being a major story palace, it does mean that it's going to be significantly interspersed with bits and pieces of the characters talking to one another that I'm just going to let them talk and I'm not going to talk over them. Um, but there's a fair amount of stuff that we can talk about because we're just about reaching the second okay. half of this we palace. Well. Hey. Yes. What are your thoughts? 
So I've mentioned before how the second halves of these palaces tend to have slightly different and usually a lot more difficult enemies, and that's certainly true here in Madarame's palace, um, as you will see as um, we go through this episode. So the first port of call for us here is to head over into the next uh, room which will and eventually we will get access to the next half of the map which is always handy um, and then yeah we'll see what sort of enemies I think initially the enemies aren't too dissimilar to what we've seen before but what we will start seeing a lot of are the the guys that were the mini boss that you fought as just Ryuji and Joker, which obviously become they're, they're a lot easier with a full team as opposed to just um, you know just remove just your two characters. It's a, a much easier with the full team, but that is still something that you're gonna have to um, work your way through. The battles can be a little challenging just because they do a lot of damage and. You make a couple of mistakes and Joker gets taken out and it's a right pain. Um, but aside from that, we're going to meet um, a fair few more uh, enemies, a lot of which are, or a few I should say at least, are personas that we already have. Um, later on we'll see um, some Copper Tengu, some Inugami, which are both personas that we very recently fused. Um, which is also very useful because obviously we then know their weaknesses and the battles aren't too difficult. Um, but pretty much our main focus at the moment is going to... There's going to be a large maze of... Um, a large maze of infrared lasers. And there's also going to be... Some more sort board. of security rooms that we need to get into and close off uh, security systems. And we're also going to start jumping through some rather large paintings, which um, is probably the coolest mechanic, I think, uh, within this particular palace. It's, it's neat that it's got this own um, little bit of flavor associated with the fact that obviously Manorama being an artist. Okay. So with that in mind, I think I will let this run on um, for a fair while longer, just because there isn't too much for me to say about the uh, the next few sections. And I will talk to you later when we get to sort of the more difficult battles, or especially a mini boss. Didn't even break a sweat. How could this be? Thank <laughs> you. 
Show me your true form. How foolish.
Okay, so we are here with the Bringer of Misfortune mini boss, which is one of the toughest enemies, at least at this stage. It's going to be one of the toughest battles that we'll have done so far, just because it's really, really consuming on your SP. This guy is immune to physical and is immune to gun, which means the only ways we can deal damage to him is just by using magic attack. And so, whilst the battle isn't too difficult, obviously he does a lot of damage and if you get really unlucky with um, a sequence of attacks, then you can just be, you know, you, you can just suffer in that regard. But with proper management, using stuff like Rakunda to lower his defense, Tarunda to lower his attack, um, maybe buffing someone like Arn, who's got particularly high magic to um, increase her damage. The battle isn't too bad, it's just it can be a right pain, just because you always have to use these spells, you're always using SP, and so you've just got to cope with that endless use of SP as you make progress through here. He also has an annoying tactic of um, casting Rage, or, uh, you know, raging one of your characters, which means they only use physical attacks, which means they're completely useless in this battle. Um, so yeah, it's got some, some nasty little parts to the battle, but ultimately it's not too bad as long as you're staying um, aware of your health and you top up that SP um, before you actually need it. So use your SP replenishing items before you actually need them. Now the fun thing about this guy is that he ends up being a regular enemy later on in the level, um, which we've seen now, you know, which is a pattern we've seen a few times now. Um, he becomes a, he is a right pain as a standard enemy just because again, he uses an awful lot of SP. It's just not fun having to spend all of that, uh, spend all of that SP just to take down one enemy. Anyway, so we'll talk, that's uh, the Bringer of Misfortune. Um, again, I'll let this run on. And yeah, when we get to another part that I think is particularly um, of note, uh, we can have uh, another chat and I'll talk about um, some more things. So I'll see you later.
kill your true form. Take a break, Joker. Well... By the way... E yeah... You got it! What are your thoughts? So as we reach the giant painting maze section of this level, um, which isn't really too hard, you've sort of just got to try all of the routes and appreciate that none of the, um, none of, you know, there isn't that much punishment for taking the wrong route at this stage, so you, you, you just need to um, find your way through the different uh, parts of this area. But uh, something I did want to talk about was the mention of skill cards that was brought up after the mini boss battle. The skill cards are particularly useful, they allow us to put any move on any persona that you know, can learn that type of move. And so if you get a media spell that might be really useful on your healing persona, if you get, um, especially for us, where our persona are going to be incredibly type specific in terms of like their elemental so I'm going to want lots and lots of fire related uh, boosting you know fire boosting skills on my fire based persona it means that um, looking for stuff like maybe um, an agile house uh, you know an, an agi spell or an advanced version of those agi spells is going to be part and parcel of this so you may well end up using quite a lot of skill cards moving on through the game which is fun because it wasn't really um, a gameplay mechanic that I interacted much with at all when I uh, did my first playthrough. 
so yeah we're going to go through the um go through the maze of paintings and do the little optional battles that you can do through that and i will catch you later Feels like true
skill. All right. That enemy was really weak. Joker, there's a chest. I will be in your true form. Some other way. Okay, so we've arrived at the gold distorted section of this palace and that uh, it's quite fitting after a relatively simple section that last section isn't really full of enemies that we need to be too worried about it's got lots of enemies that we that we've battled a lot before in this palace um, so they offer pretty good experience because you're usually dealing with four or five enemies per battle but they, you know, the actual battles are not that hard, which is quite nice. That is, uh, that's gonna change when we get to this area because there are a bunch of quite annoying enemies that will start popping up um, in this area. That being said, this is also an area where you can do um, relatively efficient grinding if, uh, if you feel the need to earn a few more levels. The first guys we're going to meet are these Copper Tengu. We've already seen these before. They were um, assisting the Ippon Batara during Yusuke's Awakening. They're weak to ice, which means they're not too scary. 
Um, but if you do miss attacks with these guys, they will just buff their evasion, which is not fun. Not, not something that makes me particularly happy about this. Um, but yeah, beyond that, we also have that bringer of misfortune type enemy. Okay. He comes back, um, especially in this section. And uh, we'll talk about that um, in a little sec. Whoa! I have something. Hey, look at this! Indeed. Hey, I disagree. Okay, so that little bit there was just a demonstration of what we're going to see throughout the rest of this level which is you're going to get pictures of the sayuri some which are fake and some which aren't and you need to identify the real version um from between all of the fakes and the nice thing about this is that it's not jenny it's not too hard a task to work out which one is the real Sayuri and so in that way it's quite easy to avoid the battles and because it's been a very long time since our last save point which was I think just before the big paintings it's very useful to you know you might want to just zip through this section uh, in order to avoid uh, having to do a hell of a lot of backtracking. That being said you can interact with the false Sayuri paintings as many times as you like which means that they're really easy grinding spots. You can just sat, sit by a painting and trigger the encounter over and over and over again and yeah, continually get experience and money. Hey! <laughs> Now, obviously, there is a penalty to repeatedly making the incorrect decision, and that is because there are some, as we've said before, there are some awkward enemies to deal with in this particular section. Um, in the last battle, I think we actually encountered our first Makami. Uh, they look very similar to the Inugami, the sort of long dog type enemies, um, but they're a little bit more annoying. And then, yeah, you will occasionally run into the bringer of misfortune, and you'll just be like, "Why are you making me lose all of my SP? It's it's very frustrating." Um, so they do a nice job of sort of hiding the real Suyuri in this last section right at the bottom. You just need to make sure that um, I've, the first time I did this, 
I definitely made the mistake of not going all the way down to the bottom, seeing one that looked vaguely correct and uh, not checking whether it was the real Sayuri here. But yeah, so um, what we do want to do before the end is we're going to want to um, take a Mikami, so capture a Mikami um, as one of our masks, because Mikami is the first persona that um, we can find in the game, which is of the nuclear elemental, um, and nuke skills are really useful to have because, um, a little bit of spoilers, but the next dungeon that we're going to be taking on there are enimies there, or uh, there are a significant proportion of enemies there which are weak to nuclear, and so having a nuclear skill already in the party is something that we definitely want to do. So, Mikami, um, you'll see I capture one later on. I do make a fair number of, um, similarly to the Ovarion in the last Mementos episode, uh, have a, a, a lot of trouble with... Um, you know, uh, making choosing the right interactions with some of these uh, personas, so uh, it takes a few times, but eventually we do get a Makami, and they are described as a divine wolf god in Japanese folklore, also written as Uguchi no Magami. It is often drawn on prayer boards to prevent fires and thefts, but is but it is also feared as a human eater, which is uh, yeah. I, I love the um, the back lore, the, the, the lore of the uh, the different uh, enemies that you find in these games. You know, just as much as I like the lore in Final Fantasy about Final Fantasy enemies and stuff like that. Anyway, so I think that is going to be it. As you see, I'm struggling to take down this um, this particular enemy. Um, so I think I will leave that for now. And... I don't think there's much else for me to talk about, so I will leave it to play. I'll fast forward through the remaining parts of the, um, the combat and stuff like that. And yeah, uh, we will... By the end of this episode, we will have sorted out our infiltration route to Madarame's treasure. And we will be ready to then make good progress going forward, um, you know. We're pretty much going to send the calling card and deal with the Madarame boss over the next couple of days. So, I hope uh, I hope you I hope you will enjoy the rest of this episode, and I will hope to see you on the next. Okay. Easy win. They were nothing. Hey, impossible. I'll reveal. 
your true form. <laughs> Hazy? For the time being. Once we send the card and make Matarame aware it'll be stolen, it'll materialize like Yoo-hoo! I wonder what form it will take. Who knows? That is something like a self-portrait. The source of what distorted. This is safe. Huh. 
Break, Joker. Well, hey, mm, true. What are your thoughts? Shall we go? Okay. Joker. I see. What are your thoughts? Okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> 